Hi guys, my name is Dino. Um, I go under alias DinoS22 on um, forums like Extreme Systems and uh, I for Memory, Overclockers Australia. I represent Team.au, Team Australia Extreme Overclocking Team. And what we do is we overclock and we use extreme cooling. Uh, extreme cooling that we use is liquid nitrogen. Um, it's a liquid that, we, it, it, that will basically cool a processor down to minus 196. Um, and basically that's what I'm going to demonstrate here. So let's start. So the first thing I'm going to do is start the machine on air cooling, make sure that it can boot up, that it's stable to go into BIOS. I'll go into BIOS and I'll check the temperature. So as you see on the screen, uh, current CPU temperature is 31 degrees. Uh, the idea uh, behind this is to, um, uh, in first uh, part, is to actually learn uh, what the tolerance to cold is for this particular CPU. So what we're going to do is we're going to be pouring liquid nitrogen until the system shuts down. And that will give us a rough idea while, while following the temperatures uh, where we will need to be, where we'll need to maintain the temperature for further overclocking once we uh, get seriously into it. So here we go. Okay, so the current temperature is 34 in BIOS and it's 27 degrees on my thermometer. See the temperature is falling down in device it's going down to 24 23 so it's continuously dropping so we'll keep pouring uh, liquid nitrogen so I'm steadily pouring liquid nitrogen um, keeping the level uh, about 20% of height of the, um, the pot, well, uh, this tube that's cooling the processor. The temperature is down to um, 7 degrees in BIOS and 9 degrees on my thermometer here, which is attached to the bottom of the base. So I've got two different readings. The BIOS reading is a motherboard reading, and this is a physical temp, uh, temp probe reading attached to the bottom of this base, of this um, LN2 pot. We call them LN2 pots. Okay, so now that it's almost evaporated at the bottom, I'll add some more. Okay, the uh, temperatures are going into negatives. By the way, I'm using a Kingpin Dragon Evo 2.4 uh, pot. It's a special specially designed uh, CPU uh, pot based or, or used, um, this, it's designed with copper and aluminium, it's, it's got two different surfaces. The copper is actually touching the CPU, this copper is probably the best material to use uh, to draw, withdraw the heat from the CPU itself and it can hold the cold temperatures for a lot longer than aluminium does. The aluminium tube that's attached to it is just hold, um, giving me enough height so that the uh, liquid nitrogen doesn't spill out uh, on all these different components and uh, that's pretty crucial so you don't want to kill any of the um, components by doing so. The current temperature is minus 27 in BIOS and minus 15 at the base of my um, pot here. So we'll keep doing this until um, until we get a system shut down or system freeze. Ideally, uh, <coughs> ideally, when you're overclocking, you want to um, use components you're very familiar with, um, and um, you would 
pre-test these things so that you don't have to waste time or um, or liquid nitrogen. It's, it's it's not it's pretty expensive to buy, so um, uh, you need to be wary of all these factors when you're um, uh, doing this sort of overclocking. So since this is our first time, this is uh, we need to find these things out so very quickly. Minus 45 in BIOS, minus 28 on the base of my thermometer. Okay, it's minus 51, minus 33. Usually, uh, CPUs in 45 nanometer um, will cold bug anywhere between minus 60 and uh, minus 160. That's the, the range they can normally handle, not the full minus 196. Um, so, uh, in the most CPUs I've had will probably reach about minus 110. So, hopefully, if you can get minus 110, will help us uh, get the overclocking results we need. It's also important not to overfill, uh, not to fill more than say 20% or where the copper ring is when you look down into the tube uh, because if you fill up the pot halfway up and you, you're about to reach your cold bug limit, that you have to wait for this liquid nitrogen to evaporate uh, and, and then heat up uh, the CPU and, and if you've got a lot of it left you'll be faced with a scenario where you have to use a heat gun and uh, uh, basically sit with a heat gun for a long time before the temperature will go back up to whatever the CPU is able to boot up at. So it's best to go in small steps, always use small steps. If you've uh, never seen this sort of overclocking before, it's uh, quite common on uh, and uh, our team, teamau.iformemory.com, we actually have um, a lot of our news stories and events that we go to and uh, overclocks that we normally do, and you can see the full stories there. Or go to extremesystems.org forward slash forums. There's quite a few people worldwide which this is this is quite a uh, popular sport, particularly in US, um, and you can see a lot of people doing this sort of thing that I'm doing now. Okay, the temperature currently is minus 77 in BIOS and minus 52 on the thermometer. Now, gigabyte <coughs> motherboard's temperature sensor will stop in BIOS at minus 77. That's the limit it reaches. So now I have to uh, rely on my thermometer here to um, push the temperatures further. So we'll just keep going until it freezes up. Minus 88 in BIOS, minus 61 in the thermometer. I keep having, I keep glancing at um, the bias and the thermometer because I, I, I have to be aware of exact temperature where the uh, system shuts down. So if, in case it happens now, I, I, I need to actually know roughly where the settings were. So that's why I keep glancing at, at two different things. Okay, get some more. It seems that the bias temperature has stopped at minus 88, so that's where the limit was on this particular temp sensor. But this particular one is still going, so minus 
67 it's showing right now and it's, it will keep going down. Just moving the BIOS um, around, making sure that it's not frozen, so it's now it's, it's still working properly. It's down to minus seventy-four with the thermal sensor. Minus seventy-four. There we go. Some of the components that we're using is uh, we've got a Gigabyte um, X48T DQ6 motherboard, which is a DDR3 version of uh, motherboard. We're using Corsair 1800 megahertz CAS7, so latency is 77720, 1T at 2 volts. We are using an NVIDIA 9800 GTX uh, graphics card, <coughs> and we're using an Intel E8500 CPU. Uh, it's a 49, uh, 45 nanometer dual core uh, uh, CPU. The temperature is currently is minus 76 on the temp probe. Get some more. With uh, liquid nitrogen, depending on how humid um, the uh, air is, uh, you can also uh, protect your motherboard further by uh, uh, getting a roll of paper and rolling it around the CPU pot. Um, it's, it's fairly dry here, but uh, in, in case it is uh, quite humid where you are, wrap some paper around because uh, all the water droplets will um, eventually uh, go down and onto the motherboard. Uh, what we also use uh, to protect the motherboards further is we use Vaseline or plastic spray or something that will uh, or even nail polish uh, uh, around all the metal bits around the CPU so where all the little uh, spots are, the ICs, uh, you basically have to protect everything um, so that condensation doesn't short uh, uh, something or part of the components on the motherboard. Uh, that's that's crucial. Otherwise, you know, you're looking. It's depending on how humid you are, if it is a humid uh, place, you'll probably end up having a lot of temperature problems, and humidity-related problems, and instability problems uh, fairly quickly. Unless you do something like that, we've already prepared the board um, earlier uh, using uh, these techniques, um, and then we've basically coated. Uh, the entire area around the CPU socket and also we've uh, coated the area around the MCH or the um, North Bridge itself on the motherboard. Okay, the temperature on the temp probe is down to minus 82. Considering that the bias temperature was um, lower on, on the core and hopefully we can trust it, um, Looks like this CPU is already reaching roughly around minus 100 on the core itself, so it's um, it's not a bad CPU. Hopefully, it will keep going. Bias is still working properly. It's a bit of a play with the keyboard. Make sure it's still running. Now, benchmarking with liquid nitrogen can be quite tricky, uh, and there are a 
few different what we call cold bugs or, or temperature related problems. Uh, one cold bug which is quite common on, on uh, motherboards is uh, called a boot up bug or boot bug. And that basically means is when you're going to BIOS and you save settings and you restart the machine to go into Windows, there's a certain temperature in which the, the system will not start up at. And usually that's lower than the operating temperature in Windows itself. So uh, um, basically uh, what we see on some other boards is uh, if you don't save any settings in BIOS, uh, you, you don't ex actually experience that because it'll just shuffle through and go back into the shuffle through its uh, boot up settings and go into Windows and you're going to have any problems. But as soon as you enter or if you reset the CMOS, um, you'll probably end up having the cold bug problem. Um, uh, on my experience with Gigabyte, uh, usually that's around minus 100 or so. So um, uh, sometimes it's minus 130, depending on the motherboard uh, as well. You know, um, X48 TDQ6 is a motherboard that's been uh, um, I have particular interest in because um, Team Australia, Team AU, has been a beta testing for Gigabyte um, for the last. Uh, four to five months and we were helping Gigabyte develop a motherboard which will be able to uh, handle extreme uh, cold, very high uh, voltages uh, on the CPU um, and uh, like basically extreme overclocks and uh, actually takes quite a lot of uh, uh, development to do this and we have killed uh, quite a few motherboards um, uh, mainly through uh, trying out different things and really pushing it to its extremes you know, to make sure that uh, out of the box, this motherboard will be basically an overclocker's dream. That's that's what uh, most of them are now. You know, the X forty eight T is basically fruits of uh, our combined labor with Gigabyte um, uh, United. Okay, current temperature on the temper is minus ninety. Still going down. Minus 93. <clears throat> it's still pulling down. It takes um, approximately two liters of liquid nitrogen to, um, uh, depending on the pot you're using, you know, to actually pull down the temperature to. Uh, minus 110 or so, so um, it's it's quite a slow process, but it, it, that's a good thing as well because when you hit a uh, cold bug, um, you have to get the temperature, warm up the CPU basically, so if it was going up fairly, uh, going down fairly quickly, then you'd have uh, quite a few problems uh, relating to cold bugs. Okay, the bias is just frozen. As you can see, if I'm trying to uh, use a keyboard, and the bias is not moving. So basically, we need to reset the machine at this point. Let's see where we stand. Minus 96 is where it's frozen. Okay, well, let's start it up. Okay, so this is a sign of a cold bug on the motherboard. I'm trying to power up the system the system gets initial power, nothing happens. See? So basically, the reason why it's doing that, what I'll do is, I'll use a uh, heat gun to speed up this process. While I'm using the heat gun, I'm also trying to start the board again because, um, and also I'm following the temperatures. At the moment, it's actually minus 87, and it's still not allowing me to start up. Here we go. 
minus 78. The board is starting up. We should see a screen coming up shortly. Ah, almost there. Here we go. Minus 75. You have to talk to it nicely as well. That's the only way to start it up. Please start up. Here we go. All right. So minus 74 is our cold boot bug. Okay, but um, we've seen the temperature go down to uh, uh, minus 85. I, I've already forgotten, but uh, we know that we've got about 10 degrees between the boot bug at least and the uh, actually operating temperature for the CPU. Okay, so this is the second part of um, our testing. It's actual BIOS, BIOS changes, and um, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to load uh, default settings first. Gigabyte Control F1 will unlock all the, um, all the settings, even the hi hidden settings in the uh, BIOS to change. So these are the menus I'm going through. The important ones to change, I need to get rid of all the uh, CPU temperature protection, thermal monitoring, visualization. I don't need any of those things because we're going to uh, be overclocking this and I don't want any of those to inhibit the uh, performance. I also tend to disable some of the components like audio. I don't need, I'm not going to use Firewire or, LN or uh, network ports. I'm going to disable all those serial ports. I'll disable all of that. Okay. Now we're back in uh, the um, health part of the um, BIOS showing temperature. You can still, the temperature is still at minus 88. So the core temperature is actually still, um, uh, well, it's now starting to drop. So it's now minus 87. So uh, minus 60 on the uh, temperature probe is roughly minus 86, so 26 degrees delta between my temperature probe and the BIOS um, uh, temperature. So if we go uh, have a look at the BIOS again, we are going to go into uh, what's called uh, Motherboard Intelligent Tweaker, MIT. This is Gigabyte's um, um, basically overclocking system. This is where all the main overclocking happens on motherboards. Um, basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through some of the settings uh, to uh, improve the performance. So graphics cards, we put them on turbo setting, uh, so the bandwidth, it, we get full bandwidth from, for the graphics card. Um, the PCI Express uh, frequency, we'll set it to 100, uh, so that we lock it into ma manufacturer um, default setting. Uh, we are going to um, disable the XMP profile and, and manually set everything. So we're manually going to set the front side bus and we'll make the front side bus 500. As you can see above front side bus, it's actually saying 4.75. So if we're using 9.5 multiplier, we're going to push that frequency from uh, default 3.16 gigahertz, 5.75 gigahertz. So quite a big jump there. Um, we're going to set the memory ratio to 3.2, which equates to 1600 megahertz. I'm just going to uh, use my memory test settings, which I know were stable previously. So timings, 87770, 87720, I'm sorry. TRD6 and TRCD, or refresh to ACT delay, will make it 70, just in case. 1T command rate. Now voltages, DDR3, we're going to add, uh, the standard voltage is 1.5, we're going to add another 0.5 volts, so that's going to make it 2 volts. Um, we're going to increase the voltage on front side bus to maximum allowed, it'll be 1.1 uh, plus 0.35, 1.45. Anything above that and you're running uh, the risk of killing the CPU fairly quickly. NCH is north bridge voltage, we're going to add 0.35 and leave these settings at auto and enable 
load line calibration which stabilizes the VCO voltage. And we're going to set the VCO a little higher this time. We, we had it at um, fairly low settings. We'll, we'll put 1.7 volts um, for the VCO. Okay, let's have another look at the settings that we've got in bias. Looks in order. Save. Okay, let's see what it does. Moving back on the rig. Okay, so we're booting at 4.75 gigahertz. Um, we're going into our operating system and we're running Windows Vista um, today. So it'll take a few moments and we'll boot into Vista. While I'm doing that, the temperature on the temp probe is minus 60 here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to bring that temperature down to minus 70. Because I know that minus 70 should be stable. Okay. Can you please um, uh, zoom on the screen? So this is the frequency we are operating on right now. We are at uh, 475 megahertz from standard 3.16, sorry gigahertz. I'm, I'm talking about. Okay. So this is overclocking. The memory is running at 800 megahertz times two, so 1600 megahertz, 877, 21T. Let's see how stable it is. The current temperature is minus 68 degrees. Okay, let's start the 3D test. So the idea is to, the temperature has dropped fairly quickly to minus 63 and I've put more liquid nitrogen so that I maintain the temperature on minus 70. So the idea is to keep that temperature in that range. If you go past minus 85 or so, you're probably going to uh, force the motherboard to shut down prematurely because it's cold bugged. This is an operating cold bug now. So right now it's minus 75. Now, at this point, it's good to have smaller pores. So you're not using large pores. You're only doing small touches, so only the very small ones like that. Okay, and you basically follow the temperature. So I want to keep it. I want to keep the temperature at minus seventy-five. So the temperature is minus seventy-five. It's starting to drop minus seventy-four point six four and one. Small pull. What that does? See, it makes it colder again. Minus seventy-seven. Okay, minus 78. And it's dropping down again. So you wait for it to drop down to minus 73 or so. Minus 76 at the moment. And when you get more experience with this, you get better at it. And the better at it you get, the closer the temperature differential you can make. So uh, with the right tool equipment and uh, the right uh, testing equipment here, I can basically maintain the temperature in a, in a very intensive CPU test like this within one or two degrees. And uh, when you're uh, pushing the absolute limits of a, of a overclock system, that's sometimes very important because you can only do certain tests at certain temperature. Guys, I'm going to need some more. Uh, number two, can you fill up this one?
Okay, so all I'm basically we're doing 3D Mark 06 at the moment, future mark, so you can have a look at the screen. And my temperature is um, basically varying between minus 73 and minus 78, roughly. And um, I'm basically just keeping it there for now. When I start to push the CPU uh, more seriously, I'll basically have a much closer look at this and I'll, I'll be concentrating on the temperature differential a lot more. So I'll be very careful where there's temperature differences are. Now the, uh, the intricate thing about some of these tests, for example, this test right now is a CPU test. So this test will have extremely high heat output. So for tests like this, you have to keep an, an eye on the temperatures even more. So uh, because uh, the CPU will get much hotter than what it would normally do with uh, uh, standard graphics tests. So in this one here, uh, I'm, I have to keep uh, more of an eye. Otherwise, we're going to uh, we're going to uh, crash. We haven't yet, so it's good. Here we go. Second CPU test. See, I'm using small pores, very small. And also, if you're going to keep liquid nitrogen in this styro cup, just make sure you keep an, keep an eye out on the cup itself because uh, sometimes you'll have um, condensation forming around here. And uh, if you're keeping it above your setup here, you can start dropping water on, on top of your setup. So it's good to sort of design uh, this area or you have this space uh, workable so that you can um, uh, basically not go over the motherboard just in case you're you've got condensation which could basically trickle onto the components and even though you've um, protected most of them with a we've used Vaseline in this instance um, you know you can never be 100 percent sure that you've cut, covered everything so it's better to just be safe than sorry you know that's I mean most of these components are quite expensive we are down to the last test in 3d Marco 6 called deep freeze and uh, my temperature currently is at minus 71 and I've, I'm just bringing it down to minus 76 again so that I'm in the safe zone uh, if you want to call it that and we're waiting for this uh, last test to finish now important thing to note here is when you're approaching the finish of a benchmark uh, be careful how much liquid nitrogen you pour into the tube because once the benchmark finishes there will be no load on the CPU itself and the temperature will drop down considerably more than what we normally do because you've got less heat you know underneath the tube uh, that you have to cool so be very ca careful near the end and try not to put too much because if the temperature if for example right now we're at minus 77 and uh, it, this test is about to finish if I have a big pour now during the test the temperature will still be within maybe minus 80 degrees However, if this test was to stop, my temperature would actually uh, uh, rocket, rocket down to minus 85, even minus 90, uh, you know, depending on the, the cold transfer with the pot you're using. You know? Okay, so we finished the test. Um, um, our 3D Mark 06 um, score is on the screen at the moment, so you can have a look at that. Um, in this area here, so the, the program is reading at 4741, slight bug with the reading software, but that's the CPU we're using, E8500, 2 gig of memory and a Vista Ultimate. As you can see there, our graphics card is NVIDIA 9800 GTX. Our score, we haven't tweaked this score, we haven't applied any usual tweaks when you're using, you know, in your competitions and whatnot. So this is a basic stock score, stock megahertz on the graphics card. So these are the scores for the SM2, SM3, and CPU. And these are the individual frames that we've gotten. Okay. Okay.